Hello there, Dragon Ball Infinity. I am your DBI Eden Eichenballen, and this is going to be a roleplay discussion about a uh, a topic that I brought up in my last video in the Zalker log, which I'm going to call archetypes. And this is a very important video to the people that aren't uh, aren't regulars here, uh, to to some degree. And what I mean by that is. Uh, the people that have been playing here for a long time, the role players that have been doing this for years and years and years, they tend to gravitate and understand this concept without needing to be told about it. And perhaps even new ones don't need this advice either, but it's something that's really good to emphasize for new role players to come to the channel. And we just happen to have like a whole new uh, adventure, like group of adventurers that is going on in Nick Yellow. And so I want to, I want to address this. And again, I talked about this at the end of the Zalker roleplay review, but it was late, I was tired, it kind of it kind of came up naturally in the way that I do these videos, but I, I wanted to go more in depth by what I mean by archetypes. And so the 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 main one that I mentioned was the idea of the martial artist, and what really spurred it uh, is that I was going back and I was reviewing some of the old videos that Riz had done, and he had done a video for a log called uh, The Ugly Side of Town. And he started to talk about how interesting and how useful a character like Endon is. And Endon is primarily a scientist. Now, if you go into Endon's backstory, if you read his bio, Endon has martial arts training but his character, his archetype of a character, is a scientist. It is not a martial artist. And this is brought up even further. When Endon first appeared on channel, uh, he appeared in the in Sector 8 in Slammer's Bar, and he was wearing this strange device. And I don't, like, in my mind, the way that he wrote it, it was like this very large, like, if you know who the Maker is in Marvel Comics, which is kind of like a dark version of Reed Richards, it was something like that that made, like, his skull go back. And, like, he had this big this big mechanical device on his head that he was that he was doing like that was our introduction to Endon is he's wearing this device and you know is and and everything that Endon has done like he has fought in very very climatic very very uh very large events i will i'll say it that way very large events like he has been involved in in venom uh, he has gone on to do the Sickness of Hydea arc. He was present in Tal uh, He's, you know, at, he's had his own personal adventures here and there. And then also was one of the champions, like the, the final contestants in the Isirian Proving that happened on Earth. But in the character that Indon is, is not a martial artist. It is a scientist. That is foremost his archetype even if he has a background in martial arts which explains why he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone like nova uh he ultimately is not a martial artist he is a scientist that is his archetype and that's incredible and very important to the setting we need characters like this and riz says this so much better than i can probably say it right now in that video that I'm referring to about the ugly side of town, but like when you think about Dragon Ball, when you think about Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super, there are so many instances where it's so subtle, but like Bulma and Dr. Briefs is the entire reason that everything in the series ever occurred. The dragon radar, the, the ship that could travel to Namek in just a few days. Like you need characters like this. And we need to give them the same kind of, like, power as martial artists. And this is something that is on the admin level of things. But, like, there was a, there was a moment, there was a time where Endon was talking about making an actual time machine. And, you know, like, when we first kind of talked, we first heard about this idea, like, we kind of, like, guffawed a little bit. Like, uh, like, that's a little bit dangerous. But... Those are the kinds of things that we should be doing for a character like this, because that is what the archetype is about. Um, that is why it's so important to have those scientist characters, is to get crazy situations like this. And 
you know, like again, that's more of an administrative part, but that's an archetype that we should play into if you want to play a scientist. And this, I'm I'm talking about this specifically because I think we have a new one. I think we have another scientist, which is Misho. Uh, Misho is again a martial artist, like has martial arts background, has they're building basically bionic upgrades to themselves. But ultimately, they're a scientist. That's really the archetype that Misho is, based off of what I've read in their backstory. And so, we we really we as the administrative staff need to be like cognizant of the fact that we we need to make these characters seem and appear as more as powerful as uh, some of the other archetypes. Now, the the most common or, or the you know I'm going to say the most common archetype, but actually it's one of the rarest in recent Dragon Ball Affinity. That I began, that I ended my last video on, is the martial artist. And as it turns out, there's only been like four of them in the entire, like dedicated true martial arts style characters in the entire new era. And again, and just to lay that out, that's Nova, that's Genesis, that's Mosin, and then maybe Zalker, maybe. And when I'm talking about a character who is a martial artist, who that is their archetype, this is like a lot of characters have martial arts training, but that does not make them martial artists. And I, I want to go into depth as to what the difference really is. The difference between a martial artist and someone with a martial arts background is that a martial artist, their logs when they are doing solos, when they are, when they appear on chat, they're doing katas, they're training, they're doing push-ups and exercises, and they are f trying to physically like improve themselves in every way imaginable. They are doing the rounds, and that's the reason why Nova is one of N Nova, Genesis, Mosin are the th the three real ones in the setting. Because every single log, you can go back and watch, Nova like was trained by master martial arts style characters. They every single log that Nova appears in, they are doing push ups. They are like uh, doing katas. They are fighting. Like you know, they they're doing like sparring, shadow boxing sessions. Like they are training. Mosin is the same way, and Genesis is the same way. Genesis is a little bit more of a heroic martial artist, but Genesis does this too, and those three characters are the only ones that I have seen this entire era that are acting in that way. That every role play that you get into with them, they are martial artists at their core. Um, and so, and and I want to preface this by saying it it sounds like I'm trying to promote that you should be a martial artist, and that's not true. Uh, it's very hard to actually write a good martial artist because those logs can get very boring if you're not a good writer. For instance, we have seen so many roleplay logs where people are just doing the, the physical exercises, doing the training, but they're boring. They're, they're not... They're there to, to essentially get red points. And I hate to say it that way, but it's kind of what they're really about. And there's nothing wrong with just like trying to get some red points. There's really nothing wrong with that as a concept. But they don't make very interesting stories. And that's what separates a true martial artist from someone who's just doing some training. Is that it doesn't feel like these characters are just trying to get some red points. When they're training, there's a whole story that is going along, like explaining why they're doing what they're doing, um, explaining the motivations behind it. Or again, like they start every log as being in the middle of a training session. Like it's just part of who they are. That is their archetype of character. And we have to lean into their strength about it. And that strength is that no one should beat a martial artist in a 1v1 where there's not some type of advantage present. And I am I say this with all the love in my heart. I say this with, uh, with the deepest respect for both Indon and Nova. But in the Iserian proving, it is nonsense. It is absolute nonsense that Indon could have even been a match for Nova. 
And I don't mean that, like, the fight couldn't have gotten close. But I'm saying the fact that they got down to, like, one RP energy together is nonsense. Makes no sense. And I've kind of held on to this opinion for a while since it happened. But it, it upset me. It aggravated me that that happened. Endon is a, again, has a background in fighting, a background in martial arts, but he is very clearly a scientist. And literally every single log that Nova is in, she has been doing katas and exercises, she has been fighting, she is trained, she has been trained by the Psyhardens uh, of old. Like, she should have beat Endon. I mean, there shouldn't have been a question about it. And I'm talking, we're talking about the difference between like 10% RP energy or something. But Nova should have won that fight. Hands down should have won that fight. And the only reason it makes sense in my mind is just that Endon is a very ingenuitive character and his ability with the Earth Spheres is very strong and it's something that Nova maybe never like encountered before. But if there was ever a second fight between them, now that Nova knows what Endon can do, Nova should wreck Endon. Like, having experienced his abilities and his powers, and maybe the strangeness of them, and gotten to the, the uh, understood what it's all about, like, if we're talking about brass tacks here, Nova should have crushed Endon in that fight. And when I'm saying crush, again, like, I'm, you know, I'm talking about, like, it would have been a good fight, it would have been very similar in power level and strength and speed, but Nova has the advantage because she is an actual martial artist. She should beat somebody in a 1v1 that is, that doesn't have some weird, absurd advantage going on. And that's the strength of the martial artist. That's what we should lean on to. And again, very hard to write a good, compelling martial arts character. Now, there's kind of a sub- set of the martial arts archetype that comes up more often and i think there's a character in the do in the new era in this new nig yellow arc called leylen that i think falls into this and i think a lot of other characters sort of fall into this archetype and i'm going to call it the the veteran archetype or the soldier archetype and this is a person who has combat experience they have fought in like battles or wars um zalker is actually probably closer to a soldier zalker is a soldier he's not a martial artist based off of what i've seen so far but uh, and so i made that mistake in my last video there is kind of this sub genre of the martial artist which is the soldier and the soldier is a person that is familiar with combat has experienced tacticians like training they're you know they're tactical in some way um when it comes to fighting but they're not like actively pursuing these kinds of fights. They go from place to place. They use the knowledge that they had when they were in the military academy or whatever. And they apply that to the current situation. But they're not trying to push the threshold. And that's the difference between them and the martial artist. The martial artist is always trying to improve. Always trying to become better. That's what makes your Genesis. That's what makes your Nova. That's what makes your, your Mosin. But the, the veteran is a character who is just relying on everything they've already learned and known. And they're not trying to get better. They're just using what they know to get to do what they're doing. And that's a character like Leilin. That's most Saiyans to some degree. Like Natalie would probably fall into that. I don't know how prominent of a character Natalie will be. And so that might be a character we don't know about in years to come when you rewatch this video. But, like, Natalie would probably fall into that. Uh, this would have been the archetype that, like, Vencer, my character from the past age, would have fallen into. This is the character that Mjolnir, the character I'm, um, I've been doing recently, uh, would fall into. And many, many others. But the veteran is uh, someone who has that experience, that combat training, and it gives them, like, a, a head forward. But they're not more... They're on the same level as someone like Endon, a scientist with a martial arts background, because it's like pulling back from there. And those are good characters too. Uh, there's there's a few other archetypes that we should probably just mention kind of in passing. Uh, they tend to come up quite a bit. There is the bestial archetype. 
and again, I would say this is a subset of the martial artist, and this is a character like uh, what Amon has kind of represented in times past. This character like Karuvi. Um, this is this is the like Coda would have fallen into this. Um, this is this is the character that is like driven by by instinct in some way. They're uh, they're hard. I, I think that they're closer to the martial artist than the veteran, though. Uh, if you're going to play a character of that archetype, the bestial archetype, where it's just like you're sort of reacting on instinct, you're fighting for the sake of fighting, but like you know, it's fight or flight every single time, and you're going off of that. Then there's there's an archetype I want to call like the the chaotic archetype, and the chaotic archetype is. How do I put this? It's a character. It it's sort of the equivalent of a uh, of a parody, really. It's it's a character that's like nothing makes sense with them. Like they're just kind of wild and crazy and hard to predict, and uh, they don't come up that often. But when they do, they can be problematic because. It, it's hard to fight a character like that. It, it really, again, is kind of like a parody, and you, it's hard to beat a parody character. It's almost impossible. Like, if someone were to ask me if Goku could beat uh, One Punch Man, like I would always say that One Punch Man is going to win because One Punch Man is a parody of, of this idea. And so you can't beat a parody. It's the reason that Deadpool like exists and is around and has become prominent characters because you can't beat Deadpool because he's a joke character. He's a parody of things that are going on. Not that he doesn't have good storylines, but just that like, uh, or he doesn't have good writing and good stories to follow with him. But like, you can't defeat Deadpool not because he has the regenerative powers and all this stuff, but because you can't beat a character who's trying to make fun of you. Um, and I think the the chaos character is is sort of like that. And then most other characters on the Dragon Ball Infinity roleplay, like where most people fall into, is a I, I'm going to call it the hero, um, the hero archetype. And that sounds a lot more impressive than what I really mean it to be. And what I mean by the hero archetype is a a character that is thrust into extraordinary situations and comes out on top despite them. But they are not the best at anything that they do. They just happen to kind of fall into the role of saving the world. They're one of the best examples I can think of from recent kind of anime that I think most people would be able to understand is that like Gohan Gohan is a hero archetype because Gohan has potential. He has tons and tons and tons of potential. He saves the world during the Cell games. But he also, like, completely gets schooled and owned by Super Boo. He gets his ass kicked on Namek. He gets his ass kicked and people sacrifice themselves to save him during the Saiyan saga. Like... He's a very important character, and you need characters like this. But, like, during the Saiyan Saga, when Piccolo sacrificed... Piccolo is the martial arts character, right? Piccolo's the stronger... Like, if Piccolo had survived that fight, he would have been so much more useful than if Gohan had survived it, right? And so... And that's the reason that story-wise he was taken out is because if Piccolo survives, like the fight with Vegeta is a completely different ball game. Like if Piccolo had been there, he would have like they the Earthlings would have completely wiped Vegeta off the map, probably with the help of Piccolo. But having a character like Gohan there, who again like the full moon like ball that comes out, he turns into a giant Uzuru, he bounces the spirit ball kind of bad. like. That's what most characters on DBI are. And, like, just to point at most of my characters are this. Like, Koshoro is a perfect example of the hero archetype. Sin is a perfect example of the hero archetype, or possibly a veteran. Um, and that's where most characters fall into. They're people that are brought into extraordinary circumstances, and they don't belong there, but they get by because of uh, just a plucky 
plucky attitude of a kind. And that's where most characters fall into. And that's a perfectly fine archetype to be a part of. But if you do specialize, if you do specialize in something like being an actual martial artist, you know, it's it's not just about just saying, you know, like, I trained here. It's like, that's not enough. That is not That does not make you a martial artist. Any more than saying that, like, I went to... Harvard University makes that doesn't make you a scientist. Being a scientist means that every every role play that we're dealing with that character, you're building things. You're working towards some technological advancement, some goal or something. And just like the veteran, or um, you know, just like the veteran, like the veteran deals more off of their backstory, but they they're kind of like the minor version of the the martial artist. But most people are just the hero the heroic character that has kind of shown up. And that's great. That's that's wonderful. But you need to be cognizant of the fact, uh, cognizant of the archetypes in order to interact with them the way that they should deservably be interacted with. Again, if you run into a character like Nova and you get into a fight with her, uh, you're dead. I, I don't know any other way to say it, but like, you know, like when Endon fought her, I there was no doubt in my mind that Nova should have won that. It shouldn't have, not that it shouldn't have been a contest. I think that's that's a bad thing to say, but like Nova should have wiped the floor with him because Endon just spent the last year before that happened, like working on some science project uh, on on Hydia, and Nova spent that last year like, training and fighting, and then they get to this, this tournament, and, and they're somehow on, like, equal terms, and, like, I know that goes against, like, the RP tier and the RP energy system to some degree, but narratively, you gotta be cognizant of what kind of character you're sort of dealing with, and I think she should have smashed him, I think, I think, she should have been left with probably like anywhere from 10 to 20% RP energy when it was done. That, that's how I think it really should have gone. Um, personally, this is my personal opinion. I think she should have smashed him. And I think that would have made sense. Uh, but, you know, there's other archetypes that can exist as well. More than I have described here. But be cognizant of your archetype. What, what really is your character? And... And don't try to don't try to force your character into being. You can only be one of these things. You can only be one thing. Again, most characters are going to fall into the heroic archetype, and a person brought into extraordinary circumstances. But if you really want to push towards your own archetype, towards one of the ones that I've mentioned, or another one that like makes sense to you, that should give you sort of advantages. Uh, it should lead your character to be able to act in situations differently than other characters who are not of that archetype act. And it's it's very important to keep in mind in your in the same way that I talked about like the character sheets where I wrote down like the stats of Bjolnir and um, like and, and I and I perceived my character in a different way by looking at like their strengths and their weaknesses and, and how they would fight and their goals and aspirations, your archetype does matter. Your archetype does influence how you roleplay the character and how you roleplay with other characters. And so bear that in mind as you make your characters and you're going forward and you're writing your stories. Do you want to be an archetype of some kind? And how can you make it powerful if you're... How can you make it powerful if it's not, like, the, the obvious martial arts style you know like if you're going to be that scientist how are you a scientist what makes this powerful what makes this strong and and lean into it and also lean into the advantages and strengths of your friends and your enemies anyway i am dbi or i am akabod of dbi and i'll see you guys in the chat chat